70-742 Lab 3, Creating and Managing Active Directory Groups and Organizational Units, so that's OUs. So before we get started in Ace IT Lab, I see there's been a change. Looks like they upgraded the infrastructure. So when you log in, you may not see your ISOs and volumes and lab and such. If you look to the right hand side, there's a lab resources and I've got a minus right there right now. Well, this may be your view. It's a lot more condensed view. Let's us see only what we need to see. I kind of like it. I think that was a big, big improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my LUN DC1 console. We're going to get logged on. So according to the worksheet, uh, Lab 3 has an estimated time of 70 minutes. I doubt that it's going to take us that long. Most all these labs have not been taking us as long as what they show in the worksheet. Our first lab is going to be exercise 3.1, which is creating and managing organizational units, OUs. We're going to create new organizational units in the datum.com domain, each name for the departments in your company. The OU is the easiest type object to create in your Active Directory Domain Services hierarchy. You need to supply only a name for the object and define its location in the Active Directory tree. So we're going to go to Tools and we're going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers and you're going to hear me talk about it as we're going to say Active Directory Users and Computers. I may say ADUC. Same thing. So we'll just wait a moment for that to come up should be on the screen here in a moment there we are and we'll just make it a little bit larger make it a little bit easier to see here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our domain name and we're gonna say new organizational unit and we're gonna name it engineering and all you have to do is just press enter and there it is now let's go ahead, let's jump over to the Active Directory Administrative Center. So just the same way, we can select a datum local. We can right click and we go new organizational unit. Let's name this projects. And click OK. We can create new OUs from Active Directory Users and Computers. We can create new OUs from Active Directory Administrative Center. Well, we can also do it from Windows PowerShell. Let's open up Windows PowerShell. And I'm going to type in the command new dash ad org. And I'm going to hit tab. Whoops, it helps if I spell correctly. Org. And I'm going to hit tab and let it auto-complete. There it is, new AD organizational unit. And I'm going to do a space and N for name, another space, and we're going to call it HR. And press enter. And just like that, we've discovered our third method for creating organizational units. I'm going to go back to Active Directory Users and Computers. I'm going to highlight my domain name and I'm going to refresh. And there's engineering, there's HR, and there's projects. Our three new organizational units we created three different ways. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select projects. Oh, and you should take a screenshot and paste a screenshot of your current Active Directory structure. I want to see the whole screen. I don't want to just see that Active Directory users and computers. I want to see your whole screen. I want to see PowerShell in the background, Server Manager in the background. I want to see your name. Okay? We've talked about that in the classroom that I want the whole screenshot. I don't want just a part of it. We need to do the entire screenshot. So you're going to paste that into step 12. If you've got your screenshot, select the projects OU, right click it, and select delete. 
and it says yes do we want to delete it? I'm gonna say yes wait a minute here's our first question what error message did you receive what does that mean what are the two things they're telling you there well the error message that you're going to answer for question one is you do not have sufficient privileges to delete projects or this object is protected from an accidental deletion Active Directory nowadays is set to automatically protect objects from accidental deletion. Or perhaps we were delegated permissions to create objects but not delete them. So we may not have the privileges to delete an organizational unit. Maybe we only have the permissions to create. So that's your answer number one. Question number two why are organizational units protected by default and we just answered this so you don't accidentally delete user and computer accounts go ahead and click OK projects is still there now select your sales OU and go ahead and double click on Abby Parsons user object question three is how many tabs does Abby Parsons properties dialog box have well you should all have the same number as what's on my screen count them up yep go ahead and put that answer in question number three we can go ahead and close the properties for Abby Parsons now at the top of your a doc select view and then click on advanced features that tells a duck to show the advanced features you'll notice that the hierarchy menu on the left got a lot longer a lot more things there go ahead and take a screenshot of that and paste that the entire screen your entire browser console into step number 18 step 19 is our next question it tells us to go ahead and double click the Abby Parsons user account where was it in sales yes so we're going to double click Abby Parsons now how many tabs do you, are shown in the properties dialog box with advanced feature view turned on how many tabs do you have now let's count them yep I got the same count go ahead and put that answer in question number four with the properties open select the object tab Question number five is, what is the conical name of object that shows the location of the user account? What is the conical name of this object? Well, it's right there on your screen. Go ahead and place the highlighted text right there into question number five. Go ahead and click OK once you've got question 5 answered. Now we're going to right click the projects OU and select properties and you're going to choose the object tab and you'll notice that since we have the advanced view being displayed we can deselect protect object from accidental deletion. Go ahead and click OK. Right click projects select delete we're prompted do we really want to do this and we say yes and it's gone let's go back to our sales OU we're gonna right click on Miss Parsons and we're gonna move her to a different unit we're gonna select move and in our organizational hierarchy we're gonna select HR she got a promotion click OK now select the HR OU and take a screenshot of your entire browser screen and paste that into step 29 go ahead and right click Ms. Parsons once more and select move and in our move dialog let's go ahead and scroll down and she's got demoted and she's back in sales Exercise 3.1 is done. Exercise 3.2 is creating and managing groups. And in this exercise, we're going to create 
domain local groups using ADUC, Active Directory Users and Computers. So understand that since the early days of the Microsoft Server Operating System, administrators used groups to manage network permissions. Groups enable you to assign permissions to multiple users simultaneously. We've talked, we talked about this in our lesson. A group can be defined as a list of user or computer accounts that functions as a security principle, much in the same way that a user does. So we're already in our ADUC, Active Directory Users and Computers console. Our HR is selected. Let's go ahead and right click on it and say New Group. Now for our group name, we're going to type in HR Printing. Oh, HR, get it in there. Okay, there we go. That's better. Now under the scope, remember there's three different scope settings. You're going to select Domain Local. Now let's answer our question number six. If you want to assign rights or permissions to this group, what group type must be used? What group type allows you to assign rights or permissions to a group? Security. Distribution is for distribution lists. Security allows you to assign rights or permissions. If you've got question six answered, go ahead and click OK. Take a screenshot of your browser and paste that into step five. Now, if it's not already, if you closed it, go ahead and reopen it, but we want to go to the Active Directory Administrative Center. All I did was minimize it earlier, so it was still there. I didn't have to wait. I'm going to select the Datum Local node on the left-hand pane, and in the center, I'm going to double-click on my HR. Well, it doesn't show up there because I haven't refreshed it. So let's see here. Let's see if I press F5, what happens. There it is. All right, that's all I had to do to refresh it. Okay, I'm going to double click on the HROU. In my tasks panes on the right hand side here, we're going to select new and group. So we're going to create a group in here again. The name of the group is going to be backup managers. Under the group scope, select domain local, and let's answer the following question, which is going to be our question number seven. Which group scope is rec replicated between global catalogs in a forest? We talked about this in my video for lesson three. If you want to be able to replicate a group between global catalogs in a forest, you have to select universal. Only universal groups get replicated between global catalogs in a forest. If you've answered it, leave your settings as security and domain local and click OK. OK, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and we're going to go back to Active Directory Users and Computers. We're in our HROU here. Go ahead and click in the white space in the middle of your screen here in the HROU and press F5. We can now see the security group that we just created in our Active Directory Administrative Center. Go ahead and take a shot of your browser and paste it into step 12. Let's double click the HR printing group. We're going to select the members tab and we're going to add members to our HR printing. We're going to add Mr. Adam Hobbs. We can check names just to make sure we spelled it correctly. It is. And go ahead and click OK. OK, so we've added Adam Hobbs as a member to the HR printing group. 
Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and select our IT organizational unit. That's our next step, 18. And before we go any further, what we want to do is we want to double click our IT security group. And members, we need to add Beth Burke as a member. So I'm going to type in Beth. She's the only person with that name in our group. There she is. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click OK. Now our step 19 is to double click Ms. Burke's account. We can then click the Member of tab, and we can see that she's a member of two groups, Domain Users and IT. There's your answer for question number eight. Let's give her membership into another group. Click Add and type in HR Printing. Let's check our names, make sure. Yep, there it is. Click OK. She now has membership in three groups. Whatever permissions that we've given to the HR Printing group, she now has received those rights. Go ahead and take a screenshot. Okay, let's go ahead and click her properties and select the HROU and double click HR Printing Security Group. Select the Members tab. We can see we now have two members. Let's go ahead and get a screenshot of our browser and paste that into step number 25. Once you've got your screenshot, you can go ahead and close the HR Printing Properties. Let's double click Backup Managers. And we're going to select the Members tab. We're going to click Add. And we're going to nest another group into it. So we're going to type in HR Printing. Let's check our names. Yep, there it is. And then go ahead and click OK. So we've added the HR Printing Group to the Backup Managers Security Group. Go ahead and double click on HR Printing in the Members tab. And then select the Members tab in HR Printing. There we can see who's got membership. Adam Hobbs, Beth Burke. So they are members to the HR Printing Security Group, which has membership into Backup Managers Security Group. So whatever rights or permissions the Backup Managers Security Group has, HR Printing will have, and both Adam Hobbs and Beth Burke will have. This is Group Nesting. Go ahead and click OK. We're done with that exercise. Okay, so let's move on to the lab challenge. And today's lab challenge is using OUs to delegate Active Directory management tasks. In this exercise, we're going to use the delegation of control wizard to grant Active Directory permissions to specific groups. Understand that creating OUs enables you to implement a decentralized administration model in which others manage portions of the ADDS hierarchy without affecting the rest of the structure. The Delegation of Control Wizard provides a simple interface you can use to delegate permissions for domains, OUs, or containers. So in ADUC, let's go ahead and right click our HROU and we're going to select Delegate Control right at the top of the list. We're going to click Next. We're going to click Add. And in the Add, select Users, Computers, or Groups. We're going to type in Backup Managers. And you can check names if you'd like. Make, just make sure it's spelled correctly. It is. Click OK. Then let's go ahead and click Next. In the Delegate the Following Common Task list, go ahead and select Create, Delete, and Manage User Accounts. Create, Delete, and Manage Groups. And Modify Membership 
of a group. So this would allow the backup managers the rights to create a user account, perhaps create a new group, and give the new users membership to the new group. Go ahead and click Next. We can see a synopsis of what the settings are going to be when we finish. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot showing the tasks that you're going to be delegating. Take a browser screenshot and paste that into step number seven. We got your screenshot. Click Finish. Right click on the HROU and choose Properties. Select the Security tab. Now let's scroll down to we see Backup Managers and single click on Backup Managers. Question 10 is what permissions, which permissions are shown by Backup Manager for the HROU? So if you scroll down we can see and you can see that allow special permissions are the permissions that are shown for backup managers in the HROU. There's your answer to question 10. Click the advanced button right down here. Might just take a moment, there it is. And go ahead and paste this next browser screenshot into step 13. If you've got your screenshot Click OK once, click OK twice. You can close Active Directory Users and Computers. You can close the Active Directory Administrative Center if it's still open. And Lab 3 is complete. Thank you.